So now what I'm going to do is I want to make sure this board is flat. I haven't flattened it. Uh, I got it and I want to make sure there's no warpage or cuppage and if it appears there are, there is, then I'll surface one time before I actually uh, start my inlay project. So I, I validate that by checking it right on the CNC. I've got everything connected down and so uh, I'm ready to check for flatness. So the first thing I'm going to do is Z on this corner, then I'll Z on this corner, this corner, and this corner, and see if it's out of flat. Okay, right there, I'll hit Z0. Now I'll come over to this corner. This part of the board is actually 1.1 inches, 1.1 millimeters lower than the other corner. Now we'll go check the others. Minus 1.1. This one was minus 0.7. This one was minus 0.9. So now we have minus 1.1 uh, minus 0.7 minus 0.9, and this should be zero. We'll go back and check our zero. That's still zero, so that's good. So that means at the deepest point, we're minus 1.1 over on this side. We'll check that one more time, which means we're 1.1 millimeter out of flat, which means we'll probably we'll want to surface this because one millimeter can make a difference. Okay, at this time, we're going to flatten this thing because we saw that it was minus 1.1 here, zero here, minus 0.7, minus 0.9. So I want to take this thing down at least 1.1 inches to make it nice and flat to make sure we're starting out with a flat surface so I've changed my uh, bit to a surfacing bit uh, which is my 2 and 1 8 inch bit I'll put something in the description on that bit and now what I need to do is I need to zero this bit it's going to be a manual process where I run back and forth and so I'll zero this bit over here on the corner Going over, uh, overlapping just slightly, coming down, overlapping just slightly down in the y direction also. But I'll zero it first. So now I know it's zero. Hit Z zero, come back up, and I'm going to come down to this direction, which so I see how far I have to clear it. So I know clearing is a Y is minus 2, so as long as I'm past minus 2 and clearing on Y up, is 242. So my parameters are minus 2Y plus 459Y. So my X direction is X equals 242 out the outside. And I have overlap at minus 15. Okay, so now I know I'm clear. I'm coming up. Got to make sure I hit the right buttons. Come up with Z. Now this fly cutting can make a real mess. So I'm going to go ahead and put the dust shoe on. And this is going to be a manual operation. So I'll start trimming from this side, so I'm going to come over to the lowest area and then trim away from there. All right, and come down. I'm going to go to point 1.1, which should take nothing off here, but it'll take four off as we go across. Start the vacuum.
So one of the things I wanted to point out uh, with this flattening is, let's do a review. So what you saw me do was I measured at each corner to see how flat this board was, and I saw there was a 1.1 1 .1, uh, difference in the flattening. So to make sure my epoxy work is as clean as possible, I went ahead and I surfaced the top of this board at the very beginning. Now that doesn't mean we're not going to have wood movement and other things that cause this board to cut, but at least we know we're starting with a nice flat board. So that's one way to do it. You can run it through your thickness planer. You can do it a bunch of different ways. To me, since I'm going to do all the work on the CNC, I want to make sure that I'm getting it as flat as possible relative to what the CNC sees. I've got my fences in place, my side fence, my Y fence, my X fence. Everything is squared. I did that before the machine. Let me point something out real quickly about the clamps. One of the things you'll notice, I'm using these side clamps. You could use other hold downs. You could actually countersink in here and uh, screw this board down. And if it starts to cup, I may need to do that, making sure I countersink so that the screws are well below the surface and then I can cut them off in the future or plug them because when I surface it at the end of the uh, project, I'll need to not be able to clip that with my surfacing bit. You also saw that I used that two inch surfacing bit, which has a large head. I move it as fast as my machine will allow it to move across. And when I'm surfacing, I always go over the edge on this way and slightly over the edge on, on this side. So both sides of the X and both sides of the Y so I don't stop it and get burning as it's sitting there thinking about my next move because I'm doing it manually. So a couple things. You need to make sure, one, your fence down here at the bottom is lower than your material or you'll end up shaving it off. And two, your clamps are far enough away because generally the clamps may be slightly above your actual board. So make sure you have some kind of spacer or something in your clamps that gives you plenty of room. Otherwise, you're going to end up ruining clamps, bits, and other things. Things will be flying all over the place. Don't ask me how I know. So, um, so, and you can see that on this clamp right here. So you'll see I put an extra piece for clamping in here so that I could go past it. My machine already can go past it. There's nothing in the way here. And on this, since I know I'll be starting right here, or starting right here, and I have control, uh, I made a spacer here and I come out a slightly, I come out slightly past the edge here. The other thing I did before I actually started moving it is, you may saw that I had uh, marked down the coordinates about the end here, the end here for my Y coordinates, end here and end here for my X coordinates, and I wrote them on this board so I had an easy reference to know when I had actually cleared the board. Next step is to actually carve the pocket for the uh, clear initial coat. The next process then is since we're starting a new project, we got a new lower fence on the X direction. We want to go ahead and make sure that we have the proper zero. And once we set that zero, we will never change it until this project is complete. That's a key point. Don't change your X, Y, zero until your project's complete so you can always reinsert your project where you need to. One of the things you see I've done is I've used, I've got my 15 degree V bit in here, which is my sharpest bit, and that'll allow me to get the most accurate reading on my X, Y, and I can always come back to that. Okay, that looks pretty good from a Y perspective. Now let's get the X. That looks pretty good from the X, and that will stay from now on. Now I'm going to come up a little bit. I'm going to come out to an area on the wood that I know will always be the same location. So I'm going to come in a little bit. I'm going to go up a little bit, and I know the epoxy is going to be laid over here. So I'm going to come up just a little bit more, and that should be good. I shouldn't get any epoxy on there, and I'm going to go ahead and put an X right there so I know that's the place I will always put my Z zero. Uh, we're at the point where we've actually flattened the board 
and we uh, put our X, Y, zero here in the corner so we know we're all set up. I marked a spot on the board with an X to actually use to consistently go back and zero to this spot all the time. And now I'm going to put my first bit in. My first V bit is a 30 degree V bit for the clear pocket. It's a BBC 302-50F3 by uh, RIP Precision Tools. And that will be my first bit that I install. I always use, for those of you who have seen my videos before, I always use this styrofoam piece because I have a tendency to drop these bits out during changes, usually when I'm taking them out more than putting them in. And it saves the bits because this 15 degree and 30 degree bits do have a fragile tip. And the other thing that I would like to point out is that the people at RIP Precision Tools suggested when using these uh, tips with these really sharp tips that you want to keep sharp, not to use your, your zero pucks because if you use your zero pucks, you may actually damage the bits. Now I'm going to go to the X. X marks the spot. And I'm going to go down and put my Z0. As I said, it's recommended that you do this manually with these gentle tips. Sometimes you'll have the wrong adjustment on the zero puck. It'll go down fast and more aggressively you want. If these tips are fragile, you can break it. So again, uh, it is recommended that you manually zero these sharp bits to save your bits. It's up to you. Okay, now we're all set for the first cut. Okay, time to switch bits to the actual clearance bit, which will be a quarter inch end mill. So I'm going to go ahead and put the dust boot on, which doesn't give as good a show, but it keeps my workspace cleaner, keeps the dust down. Turn on that 5 horsepower Laguna I have. All right, so we've now finished the carving of the uh, for the clear pocket. We've got the depth at 0.135 inches, and we will be taking and pouring our clear coat in next. That's the end of the uh, video for how to flatten the board and carve the pocket. I'm trying to keep the video in more bite-sized uh, chunks. There was a lot of actual information shared there. Let's review some of the key things. One of the key things that we talked about was the flattening process, and we discussed how we go about doing that. So the first thing I did was establish where the low spots were on the board. I was actually checking to see if I even needed to flatten it, and I did. And then I started the process when I actually flattened with the low spot and worked my way across. That way I could uh, make sure everything was even. The other thing about the flattening process is making sure your clamps are properly located so that you won't hit them as you go through the surfacing process. I prefer to control that manually. Others may decide that they want to uh, put it in their controls, put it in their Vectric or whatever software to automatically do the flattening process. It's up to you. Uh, I prefer to have manual control over that and watch what's happening with my board. Uh, that's my own personal preference. So once you have it flattened, then the rest is pretty straightforward. Uh, you have to make sure you establish your project X, Y, zero location and then establish a location for your Z, zero uh, point and that you will continue to use throughout the project. The next step in this process will be to, cl uh, will be to pour the clear coat. And instead of making this video longer and putting that section in here, I wanted to uh, separate that out and so that will be next and uh, I've already done that hopefully it won't take too long the first time we talked about pouring 
the resin will probably be the longest. I have to go through the resin calculation and how much to pour and we'll see how that goes. So until, uh, until we get into the next video, I hope you have a great day.